your model, which I found quite compelling when I saw you run through it at length, involves a change in human behavior, especially around mm. diet, that has caused a developmental program that in our ancestral environment would have made us have very straight, wonderful teeth, and it has caused them to come in in ways that they do not uh, align properly. That's called malocclusion, is that right? Yeah, you're correct. Okay, so can you describe what has happened to us, what you think the causes are, and okay. um, what so, we would do to correct it? All right, well, there's two principal things that have changed when we're talking about the structure of the whole facial complex. The first thing is we have gone from being, sort of having an incredibly rough, tough, hard, low-calorie diet. You know, populations were controlled by calories, you know, how much food they had. And people had to eat anything they got hold of. And often those things were really tough. We've moved across to this incredibly soft, very rich, calorie rich diet. You know, you could have, so I'm, I'm, I'm quickly having, so today was my starvation day. So just before I had this, I have to quickly have a, a, a little bit of drink with a little bit of sugar in it. Now, I don't know how many calories I'm consuming in a relatively large cup, but the effort that I do with my chewing system to gain those calories is next to nil. So we've gone from this tough diet to a very soft diet. We're not using our jaws, use it or lose it. Now, I've got a strong jaw. How do you get a strong jaw from using it, from chewing? Now, at the very same time that we've had this gross reduction in usage, use it or lose it, We've also had this change in our posture. So most children now in the first year of their life will have several episodes with blocked noses. Now that kind of is normal now. And often that's several days. Now either you're going to lower the tongue off the roof of your mouth, separate your lips and breathe through your mouth, or you're going to die. There's no other way. Now, if you do lower your tongue, open your mouth and all the rest, there's a good chance that you're not going to go back to perfect oral posture afterwards. Mm. What started as obligatory need has become a habit. So effectively, what's happened to most of modern humanity is that we've gone from beautiful posture, lips together, teeth near, in near contact, tongue on the roof of the mouth, but good body posture and good strong chewing muscles to weak chewing muscles and hanging our mouths open. Now, if you've ever seen someone who's had a stroke, what you notice is one side of their face will drop down. Now, what I'm saying is modern humanity has had a mild to moderate bilateral, so we're talking both sided stroke, so everyone's faces have dropped down. And as your face has got longer, it's got narrower and shallower. Simple, reducing the cross-sectional area. And that's where your teeth are on the cross-section. So less space for teeth, but of course, less space for the airway as well. Mm. And that's the real crux. I mean, root resorptions, it's annoying. It's, it's treatable. You can have those implants, but if you've got major sleep apnea at a young age, it, it can, it, it's damaging. Uh, in what way is it damaging? S sleep apnea. So let's say if, if your face down swings, carrying your tongue that's attached here into your airway, you, it ages everything. You know, it is linked to cardiovascular disease, it's linked to diabetes, it's linked to cognitive impairment, it's even linked to ADHD. And when you talk about all of these subjects, well, these are lots of modern diseases. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, me saying, saying, listen, we, the, my profession, the orthodontic speciality, has, does not acknowledge any cause. It, it just doesn't know what caused the problems in nearly all of the cases. So why can't we engage in debate about this? Why can't we 
talk about it? Why can't we engage in the scientific process? Going from what I've heard you say elsewhere, if you walk into a public area, a park or something, and you look around at the people, what do you see? Disasters. What does that mean? I see car crash after car crash after car crash. And that's another thing that really, really gets me going. You know, if you, so take it, go and look, you know, go and look at some sort of David Attenborough in BBC documentary where he's with some relatively indigenous types people. And remember, they're only 50% what they would have been in the, in the glory days of hunter gatherers. And they, nearly every single person, every single tribesman or woman has really nice facial form, you know, almost exclusively, all space for all their teeth, space behind their teeth. I walk into a park anywhere, Europe, the States, you know, any, almost any developed country. And I see these sort of distorted craniofacial forms. I see people who have all kinds of, um, forms and shapes and I know how badly that is affecting their general health and that that just it, it, it actually scares me because I know that every year this is getting worse again in my opinion I have to say this all the time because if I say anything wrong people are out hunting so you're talking about an incalculable level of harm. There'd be really no calculator. If you think about no, there's the, no calculator. the degradation no, there's no calculator. in quality I, I, of life. I, yeah, I, I wonder what percentage of the healthcare costs are from a downswing in facial form and the subsequent sequelae, so effects of that on the general health, over, particularly over a period of time. So that is a, I have to say, there. There is something tragic about the idea that you walk around and can see this in each person that you pass. And, you know, I, I think your analogies are very apt. You say you see car wreck after car wreck, like bad reconstructive surgery. You see people who have the downstream effect that would be caused by a stroke. Right. These are yeah. severe we're not, harms. Not so, much, not so much. Yeah. I mean, not so much. So what I'm saying is that as your face drops down and back, it's going to force you into a forward head posture. Yep. I think that is. Yes, we are spending a lot of time on these devices. All right. We're spending a lot of time on screens. Yeah. And I'm sure that's not good for body posture. But a lot of this is the fact that if your face has dropped down and back and almost Every single person listening to this podcast has been affected and probably to quite a significant extent. Uh, and so as your face drops down and back, you have to hold your head forward. You are reducing the cross-sectional area. You're increasing your chance of sleep apnea jaw joint problems. Most of the ENT problems are worsened because, you know, a structure that does not have the right architecture does not work correctly. Crooked teeth are just one of the signs of this underlying distortion. But there's lots of health problems. And, you know, it, it's, it's, the sleep apnea is always going to be the biggest one. But I, I have suspicions about several other things that I, I'm not making public. I'm not shouting about it because it just sounds too incredible. It sounds too ridiculous. Uh, and, is there any chance that you want to quietly and privately share it with me and the couple hundred thousand people who are going to see this? Well, it's it, 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 a little bit. It's it's what I'm concerned about. I, I call this um, uh, the name I came up the other day is carotid constriction so it's related to the carotid sheath so i'm just saying that you know my concern is that um as the face drops down and back so it's a little bit like a waxwork model you've got too close to the fire and you've just um and as it occurs Yes, your tongue moves closer to your airway. And yes, you're leading to more sleep apnea. But of course, also, this bulk 
is squeezing the carotid sheath. Now, I was fascinated by a, an Italian chap, I won't even try to say his surname, who was treating MS by putting um, stents in the jugular vein. And what he was saying is that blood is pooling in the lower brain, hindbrain, and it's unable to get out of the hindbrain as well as it should be able to do. And by helping this blood to drain, he was putting a multiple sclerosis into remission. Wow. Amazing. And I, I, that and that, that interested me. And I was looking at the work of someone called Brendan Stack. And of course, what medicine loves to do is ignore outliers. It takes them as, oh, well, that's a random event. And well, if you stop to look at some of the random events, sometimes, you know, there's a whiff of something interesting in many of them. And you don't ignore them. Try and make sense of them. But what um, Brendan Stack was doing was taking people who would arrive in wheelchairs. He would build them up with appliances in the mouth that open their mouths up. And they would get out the wheelchairs and walk. And I thought, wow. I hear from other people that this effect wasn't permanent. However, in the short term, it was fantastic. Now, I was sitting there trying to make sense of this when I heard of this Italian doctor. And these made sense because the types of the, the delay that Brendan was seeing was just about right for a blood effect and a blood neurological effect. And so my idea is that what's we're happening is particularly in the people who are attempting to use certain muscles in this area to swallow and maintain an open airway, who lack space because their faces drop down, they're constricting the internal jugular. And that is leading to, this is with the suggestion where, this is, I think, the link between Alzheimer's and um, sleep apnea. They're both related to the same facial distortion. It's also the suggestion with some of these ticks, you know, these ticks people have, you know, when you're swearing in the supermarket because you've got a tick. You know, those are only suggestions. Um, and also one of the things that really fascinated me was, you know, I, I remember going to Thailand years ago when I first qualified and everyone had beautiful skin and straight teeth. Then I went back a few years later and I noticed a few people had braces. And it was just amongst the few people with braces that they also had some facial acne. And the facial acne was limited precisely to the drainage of the lymphatics from the face. Now, that lymphatics is also going down that same carotid sheath. So my suggestion is we've got this constriction on the carotid sheath that's leading to other problems. But again, I, you know, I'm, I, I want to hold back because... You know, I don't want to sound like I've got the cure to everything. No, 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 no. You, don't worry. You're among friends here. This story makes a great deal of sense to me, which doesn't mean that you've got it right or wrong. But I know this style of thought is the one that solves big problems. Lots yeah, of stuff yeah. is going to be downstream of the same single error. And trying and to make sense of the outliers will tell you how it works. Yeah. And also... The other thing going down this carotid sheath, of course, is the vagus nerve. And of course, if you squeeze the vagus nerve, you're going to ramp up your sympathetic system. And what do we notice in so many people today? They've ramped up their sympathetic system. The parasympathetic, that calming effect from the vagus nerve all the way. They call it the vagus because it's the vagabond. It's the traveler. It just goes off all the way around your body, particularly to the internal organs, calming them down. And I think that and the problem with this whole thing is that if you put someone in, you lie them flat to put them in a scanner, you ain't going to see it because it's only affecting when you're standing or you're a supine and you're engaging these muscles to maintain an airway. That story also makes sense to me, that there's a bias in the way we study things, and it is predictable that anything that uh, runs afoul of that bias will be mysterious for much longer, right? Anything you can't yes. see uh, lying down will not be discovered by this method. 